All right, you wanna hear about an epic musical? You've come to the right person because there is a musical I have been obsessed with recently. Epic the Musical. This is a musical composed of concept albums, each forming a saga of the musical. So far, there are four sagas. The Troy Saga, the Cyclops Saga, the Ocean Saga, and the Circe Saga. With the Underworld Saga coming out later this month, the musical adapts the famous text of Homer's Odyssey, focusing on Odysseus as the main character. Now, before I throw you into all this, I wanna give you the chance to enjoy all this awesome music on your own and avoid spoilers. Even though these stories are thousands of years old. All right, let's start with an overview of the characters in this musical. We start with our main Greek hero, Odysseus, king of Ithaca. Odysseus is a man with the goal to get home to his wife and son and keep his 600 soldiers safe while maintaining his golden heart. He's one of the greatest warriors in both strength and wit and struggles to maintain the balance of being a merciful leader or a ruthless fighter. Of course, we can't talk about Odysseus without talking about his crew. We have his right-hand man, Eurylochus, who's also the second in command to Odysseus. Odysseus, and Polites, one of Odysseus's best friends. Eurylochus in the myths is portrayed as more cowardly, but in the musical he seems to be tougher and focused on battle. This often leads him to disagree with some of Odysseus's decisions. Polites, on the other hand, foils Eurylochus by being the kind-hearted friend. Though he isn't in a place of command, he gives Odysseus great advice on opening the heart. The other characters shown in the musical so far are more godly characters, including Zeus, god of the heavens, Athena, goddess of wisdom, a Cyclops, Aeolus, the wind god, Poseidon, god of the sea, the witch Circe, and the messenger god Hermes. Now that you know the characters involved, let's break down the Troy saga. So this musical starts at the end of the Trojan War, where Odysseus and his men are packed in a wooden horse in order to lead the final siege of Troy after 10 years of war. The writer of Epic the Musical, Jorge Rivera Jerenes, who also sings as Odysseus, decides to represent Odysseus through the sounds of a guitar. What I find really clever with this symbolic instrument is that as Odysseus' mind changes, the kind of guitar being played has changed as well. For example, in this first song, it starts out as him being a cunning warrior, so it plays an epic electric guitar. But later, when he's faced with the prophetic vision of his death, the electric guitar gets more intense and deeper. Ah! Who was that? Then, when Zeus reveals to him that he can avoid this fate, but it's at the cost of killing an infant, we hear the sounds of single strings being played by an acoustic guitar, showing how in the middle of this siege, Odysseus' heart and mind have slowed down as he weighs this heavy choice. It's just an infant. This leads to the next song, and my personal favorite song so far, called Just a Man, where Odysseus has to contemplate whether or not he needs to kill this infant. Looking at this baby reminds him of his own son, who was the same age 10 years ago when he originally left for this war. He states, Deep down I would trade the world to see my son and wife. Just like any other good man would do. So who wouldn't seize this opportunity to save his family? At the same time, this logic is a slippery slope to so many other horrible things he could do for the sole goal of getting home. And he asks himself, When does a man become a monster? This becomes a theme in Odysseus's character, repeating musical motifs from this song in other songs, when he's making decisions that heavily affect the lives of himself and his crew. For after all your just a you sever your when does a man become a monster? I'm we just a man. There is no line. I'm if just there is not so much power, so much power, but there's no perfect key. Odysseus starts this story as a good man. And it's hard for a good man to be king. He decides to drop the infant from a wall, killing him and beginning his path closer to being a monster and begging for forgiveness.
Okay, well, I could literally talk about this all day, and I've barely scratched the surface, trust me. We sadly don't have time to go through the entire Odyssey. I'll be cruising on over to the studio for Geek's Idol, but I wonder what topic David could be covering for his segment. 